Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it went three, two, one, and then pause. Pause. <laughs> In there. So hopefully the connection is okay. We uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 9. It's a pretty long chapter. Um, and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to get, we're going to dive right into it since there's a lot of reading to do. 2 Kings chapter 9. Thanks for joining us. Then Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Tie up your garments and take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when you arrive, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, and go in and have him rise from among his fellows and lead him into the inner chamber. Then take a flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, do not linger. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead, and when he came, behold, the commanders of the army were in council. And he said, I have a word for you, O commander. And Jehu said, To which of us all? And he said, To you, O commander. So he arose and went into the house. And the young man poured the oil on his head, saying to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over the people of the Lord over Israel, and you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, so that I may avenge on Jezebel the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish. I will cut off Ahab from Ahab every male, bond or free in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the territory of Jezreel, and none shall bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came out to the servants of his master. They said to him, Is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to them, You know the fellow what is talk. And they said, That is not true. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and so spoke the Lord to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then in haste, every man of them took his garment and put it under him upon the bare stairs, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. Thus Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram, with all Israel, had been on guard at Ramoth Gilead against Hazael, king of Syria. But King Joram had returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds that Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. So Jehu said, If this is your decision, then let no one slip, go, slip out of the city to go tell the news in Jezreel. Then Jehu mounted his chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there. And as Ahaziah, king of Judah, came down to visit Joram. Now the watchman was standing on the tower of Jezreel when he saw the company of Jehu as he came, and he said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So a man on horseback went to meet him and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. And the watchman reported, saying, The messenger reached them, but he is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. Again, the watchman reported, He reached them, but is not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he drives furiously. <laughs> Joram said, Make ready. And they made ready his chariot. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, set out, each in his chariot, and went to meet Jehu, and met him at the property of Naboth the Jezreelite. And when Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is it peace, Jehu? He answered, What peace can there be so long as the whorings and sorceries of your mother Jezebel are so many? Mm -hmm. Then Joram reigned about and fled, saying to Ahaziah, Treachery, O Ahaziah! And Jehu drew his bow with his full strength and shot Joram between the shoulders, so that the arrow pierced his heart and he sank in his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar at his aid, Take him up and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. For remember, when you and I rode side by side behind Ahab his father, how the Lord made this pronouncement against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, declares the Lord, I will repay you on this plot of ground. Now therefore, take him up and throw him on the plot of ground in accordance with the word of the Lord. 
When Ahaziah, the king of Judah, saw this, he fled in the direction of Beth Hagen. And Jehu pursued him and said, Shoot him also. And they shot him in the chariot in the ascent of Ger, which is by Ibleam. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. His servants carried him in his chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in the tomb, his tomb with his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, Ahaziah began to reign over Judah. Okay, continuing in verse 30. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, you Zimri, murderer of your master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked out at him. He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered, spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. And then he went in and ate and drank, and he said, See now to this cursed woman and bury her, for she is, the, is a king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. When they came... Uh, when they came back and told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dog shall eat the flesh of De Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as dung on the face of the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say, This is Jezebel. All right, let's pray. Father, uh, as we um, look at these events and uh, and just really the the dysfunction uh, in Israel and, and in Judah we pray Lord God that as a people that we would learn from this and follow you the true and the living God and not go down these paths that lead to destruction and pain and suffering and and heartache for so many people so Lord God help us and teach us from your word now we pray in Jesus name amen amen all right, so there's uh, a lot going on here. Um, I like how the the messenger that Eli Elisha sends, I don't think he's even named. No. It's just like, yeah, some guy. <laughs> some guy comes. And they and the rest of the people think that he, he's some man-man. Yeah. Because <laughs> could you imagine like running into some place? And then run around out of some place. At the same time, you know, Elisha told him to run right out because, yeah. you know, this isn't exactly a safe thing to do. By the way, you're, you're king now. Yeah. And, you know, the other commanders of the army who were meeting with him, what are they going to do? Are they going to throw really? down Jehu? Are they going to right. shoot the messenger, so to speak? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, the, so it's like run away. So, uh, yeah, he's anointed as king, and he said, this is to fulfill what Elijah the prophet had said, and yep. the whole line of Ahab is going to be now terminated, going to be wiped out. Um, and uh, so <laughs> it's quite, quite a gruesome picture that he paints. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, he tells his servants and tells the other commanders, and it seems like they're kind of on his side. It seems like they're very much on his side. Um, this is, a, if you're to take a look at the things that happen, here you have the other commanders of the army, and they immediately side with Jehu. Yeah. It's almost like they were planning to have a coup already and overthrow... Um, overthrow uh, Joram. Joram. Yeah. yeah, it looked like they were playing to have a coup and overthrow Joram already. They were just like, okay, who's going to be in charge? And Elisha kind of takes that decision out of the, or God through Elisha takes that decision of who's going to be in charge out of their hands. Mm -hmm. um, you take a look at later on uh, Jezebel. So when Jehu shows up to get, you know, to take care of Jezebel, he doesn't storm the tower. He doesn't do anything. He's just like, throw her down. And her servants are all ready to just toss her out the window. Right. I mean, so you got to wonder at how terrible these people were. I mean, we well, know how were. terrible they yeah. were, but I mean, there's got to be more going on than that, where it's like, okay, this is somebody who you've dedicated everything to. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
Out the window. Yeah. I mean, and she basically, she dies from, from the fall. Yeah. And, and then trampled. trampled. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but, um, there's a lot of uh, really interesting irony going on here because when Jehu finally comes out, they're sending messengers, they're sending people out to say, like, who's this guy coming that we can see coming? Is he coming in peace? Is he telling about the battle that's going on with the Syrians? What's going on here? Uh, so they send one guy out and he says, get behind me. Another guy, get behind me. Um, and then they finally kind of go out themselves to, yep. to see him. And the irony of that is where they actually meet him. Yes. <laughs> at at Nabus property, yep. which was taken, uh, well, it, remember Ahab, wanted that vineyard and he's all bummed out he's like oh i wanted to purchase the vineyard and a neighbor said no this is our family heritage and we're going to keep this vineyard yep. and jezebel said you're the king you can get what you want and i'll take care of this for you yep. and so jezebel um, devises this plot against naboth and has him murdered yep and so then Ahab goes and takes first possession of the thing. So Jezebel is the one who orchestrated the murder yep. in there. And that's exactly where, where uh, Joram uh, meets uh, Jehu, uh, who's, who's coming after him. And then he gets shot there. Yep. So he actually dies. I think he dies on that field, right? He doesn't um, die on the... He dies nearby. He may have been still on the field, but it's like he sees Jehu. And yeah. Jehu's like... There is no peace. There is no, this is, you have done terrible things. Your mother has done terrible things. Your father has done terrible things. There is no peace. There is only justice. Yeah. And Jorah was like bailing. And then he gets shot. So did he manage to leave the property before Jehu well, put it says a arrow he, through him? Or? He was um, pierced and he sank in his chariot. Then verse 25, Jehu said to Bidkar, his aide, Take him up and throw him on the plot of ground. So maybe he had gone past it, but he's now he's around Brad. Throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. So he actually is like yeah. thrown. He's just thrown there on the plot. Uh, for remember when I rode side by side behind Ahab his father, how the Lord made this pronouncement against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, declares the Lord, I will repay you on the plot on this plot of ground. Yeah. So really it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's several years later, but all of it comes back. All of it comes back. <laughs> and um, really, if you're to take a look at it, all of the, the messengers, when um, uh, Joram sent the messengers to Jehu as he was approaching, not knowing it was Jehu, yeah. uh, the messengers are like, Hey, is this peace? And Jehu's like, get behind me, we ride. Yeah. And the messengers just joined. So, I mean, yeah. this is really a sign that nobody likes Storm, nobody likes Jezebel, nobody likes it. Yeah. Yeah. And it says he uh, was driving his chariot, Jehu, furiously, like a, kind of like a madman. He's, like, yeah. he's, he's coming full till uh, towards them. He's just... You know the whip going, yeah. and he's 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 making that thing. Now, part of the reason for that is uh, he wanted to beat any messengers back yep. to the city who might be still siding with uh, Joram. Yep. So he's he's getting there as fast as he possibly can before Joram gets any word of what's going on. Yeah. And obviously, Joram did not know what was going on <laughs> there until no. it, it was too late. Um, and then Ahaziah, the king of Judah, is, is killed as well yeah. in, the, in the midst of this. Uh, and he dies at Megiddo. Uh, so he's injured, uh, but the, the injury becomes fatal. Now, it's, it's amazing if you look at uh, our own um, civil war yeah. in the United States, how many people died of wounds that today would, you would not have oh, died. Oh, no. I mean, they become infected. They become infected. They yeah. didn't have medicine. It's yeah. Stonewall Jackson. He oh he, yeah, that he, was he died of a. It was shot, I think, in the shoulder, 
and then became infected, he, he just died. Yeah. I mean, it, it would it'd be something where you would, you know, you'd have a certain amount of rehab you'd have to go through and stuff like that. But there was a lot of deaths because, well, they didn't have penicillin. They did. That was, no, they did. that was World War, that was after World War One. and Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't have the medicine. They didn't know how to treat it. They didn't know about uh, germs spreading yeah. through wounds. So if you had somebody who wasn't particularly clean after yeah. bodily functions um, and they were bandaging the wound, well, congratulations, you just bandaged stuff germs. into the wound. Yeah. Well, and you think about it, uh, there's a, a musket ball and it's going to... You know, yeah. it's going through your shirt or your clothes that you've been dirty and wearing the whole time. And fabric of the clothing is, is, embedded. is embedded in there as well. So really kind of a horrible situation. Uh, these wounds that, you know, in the past were fatal would not be fatal. Oh, no. Uh, would not be fatal now. But, yeah, war is kind of a, it's a horrible thing. Uh, and then we come to um, Jay who <laughs> goes to where... Uh, Jezebel is. It's interesting how she she fancies herself up. Well, I think she knew that her time was up. Yeah. She knew that she was going to die, so she wanted to look presentable. And I'm thinking this is a trope. I know I've seen it before in movies where here you have this character and they're going to meet their death <laughs> and they get dressed up fancily Often it's before a suicide, you know, yeah. but, you know, Jezebel knows that she's going to die. And this might be the first instance of someone like dressing themselves up for it. Yeah. Um, the vanity of it. The oh. vanity of it. <laughs> so you know, it's but, like, but that didn't really last very long because yeah. she's tossed from some high, uh, the wall of the city and, yep. um, I would not be look. I would not be pretty. And then trampled, trampled, and then basically eaten. Yeah. Except for her feet, palms of her hands, and her skull. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. It's it, this is one of those things that's kind of surprising that it happened that fast because so she gets thrown down. Jehu goes in. He's has having supper. A, he's having a meal. Yeah, he goes in. He has supper. He's had a long day of murder, <laughs> and uh, you know he comes out. He's like, "Yeah, we probably should bury her." And there's like, "There's nothing there's, left. There's really nothing left." And it's like the dogs must have been like right on her. And yeah. I guess the horses trampling kind of sped up the process some. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that was. It fulfilled what Elijah the Tishbite said in the territory of Jezreel, verse 36, the dog shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. And that's exactly what has occurred. And uh, the word of the Lord, a true prophet, the word that he speaks comes through. Yep. I mean, that's the true prophet. That's one of the indicators, you know. So there's all kinds of people that make predictions. Yep. And say this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and then if it doesn't, the scripture says they weren't a true true prophet right. uh, in there. But it happens exactly as it said. And you know how can you, you know, the it's got to be God orchestrating this. You know, you're, the guys shot at Nabus Vineyard. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, you know the way in which Jezebel dies. I mean, it's just all of which would orchestrated by the by the Lord in payment for Ahab's evil deeds yes and particularly Jezebel as well who is uh, really known as one of the most I think I don't think there's an any more evil woman that's laid out in the scripture than Jezebel no she's kind of like the the gold standard of evil yeah I mean <laughs> yeah Usually the women in the Bible were the good guys. Uh, the examples of bad ones, I can only think of two right offhand. Uh, Jezebel and Potiphar's wife. Yeah. And she doesn't even get named. Um, yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, they're on the side of the right. And But yeah, Jezebel... Well, I mean, she led... Well, she, there's a kind of thing where... Uh, uh, was it Judah's daughter-in-law 
dresses you, up as a prostitute. Tamar. 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 Yeah. yeah. Tamar, and, uh, you know, so uses deception. Of course, Judah's not innocent in all this either because he no. goes in with a prostitute. But actually, the line of Jesus comes through, <laughs> through, him. Yeah. through, through this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That, what she did was, ki- what Tamar did was kind of... <laughs> not, not, not cool. Not, not entirely, but at the same time, that was a normalish thing because Tamar was the widow of Judah's son right and the way they did it back then was if you had a you know brother. if you had a brother then the brother would take over yeah. well her first husband died because i can't remember what he did wrong he died and then his brother refused to do his husbandly duties yeah and he, he was struck down for that yes and judah he, was he, like i don't want to lose another son to this woman yeah. He basically, the second one was having sexual relations with her and withdrawing yeah. so that she wouldn't get pregnant right in there. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, some, a lot of yeah. sleazy activity going on in there. But anyway, uh, this is uh, laid out. It was a pretty brutal tra- chapter and um, oh, yeah. uh, a lot going on. But anyway, the, the word way back of Elijah, the Tishbite, are fulfilled. Yes. So let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we're thankful for this time together, thankful for your presence in our life. And uh, we pray, Lord God, that we would learn from these events. Um, sometimes it's hard to see uh, the bigger picture, but in the midst of this, we do learn things. We learn what it means to uh, heed your warnings, uh, what it means to follow you and, and to uh, trust in you and not lean upon our own understanding. And we're thankful for your grace in our life uh, that all of us would uh, are, are, of course, deserving of death because it says the wages of sin are, are de- is death. But uh, you have extended grace to us. But the gift of God uh, is salvation through Jesus. So we praise you and thank you for the gift, uh, something we didn't earn or deserve. So all glory and honor goes to you. And uh, watch, please watch over each and every person that's watching this. Keep them in your care. And may they have a blessed weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Blessings to you all.